How's it going everyone? Greg here with RC Driver and I am incredibly excited about today's video. That's because I have this massive box on my workbench and you guys know what this is. This is the Traxxas Unlimited Desert Racer and it has just blown up the RC internet lately. Traxxas did an awesome job releasing this. Nobody had any idea that this thing was going to come out and all of a sudden they just released it during the Toy Fair this year, 2018. And wow, this is absolutely an amazing machine. I mean, look at the size of this box. I mean, alrighty, I mean, just so many people are just so excited about it. I'm really excited about it. It was really cool to get it in here at the RC Driver Workshop so I could show you guys what's going on with this kit. And let's just start off with the box here. I mean, we've got the rigid truck and how cool is this truck? I mean, both of the liveries look really cool. The Fox version is very cool, but I love the rigid truck. But right off the bat here, what really catches my eye is over here is the 50 mile an hour graphic. I mean, that is pretty fast for a truck this big. Four wheel drive, pro scale, that is basically what Traxxas is calling this machine. I mean, there is so much scale detail in here and it's really a performance machine too. So uh, the fact that you're getting both, you know, some cool scale uh, details on here and the performance, it's just amazing that they're able to pack this much cool stuff into an RC vehicle. Uh, then we've got the TQI radio system and let me just flip over the box here. We've got some more uh, detail stuff here. Uh, basically what's going on with uh, the suspension here, uh, the more of the scale stuff. We've got GTR shocks on here. This speed controller handles 6S LiPo. That is super cool. Here's the truck layout. And what's really cool, let me just spin this huge box around. This is a heavy box too, by the way. Is we got a full view of the inside of the truck without the body panels on. And just look at that cool detail there. I mean, we've got the, the inner panels on the cage and everything. We've got the driver figures in there. I mean, look at those GTR shocks, just awesome. We've got the brake disc, brake calipers. We've got real spare tires on the back of it. Just super cool stuff going on. But I know you guys want to see this some more. You've probably been looking at the Traxxas website, just drooling over this thing. So let me just get this out of here so I could show it to you guys. Now, just to throw this out, Traxxas is not sponsoring this video. They did send this truck over, but I'm going to let you guys know what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And uh, there are a couple things on both sides that I really want to point out. So you're going to want to watch the entire review. Uh, but again, thank you Traxxas for sending this over. It is very cool to get my hands on one. Okay, so it's the typical styrofoam packaging that you're used to with a Traxxas vehicle. Get this stuff out of the way. Over here, here's that uh, styrofoam that helps secure the truck. And let's start off with uh, just getting everything in order because there's so much stuff going on here. All right, so there is the machine itself. Very cool. And now that I have that out and you can kind of stare at this while I'm talking to you guys, let me just go over the TQI radio system for just a second. Definitely like this radio, allows you to have multiple model memory so you can control your other Traxxas vehicles. Uh, it is link enabled so you can buy the optional module so you can expand the telemetry components for this so you can monitor what's going on with your vehicle. So definitely a nice controller. It works really well. All right, and now in here we've got uh, probably the usual instruction manual and spare parts and stuff. So let me tear into this. All right, so in here, this is the Traxxas Unlimited Racer Manual. So go through that. Want to read everything involved in here, especially if you're kind of on the newer side of RC. It'll get you in the know on everything you need to know about this particular machine. Over here, we've got a Traxxas. I believe this is like a warranty card here. Warranty registration card. So fill that out. Kick that over to Traxxas. And here we have a support guide. So if you need more information, go through all that. Make sure you read every single thing before operating this machine. Uh, now we've got some Traxxas decals, just in case you want to add a few more to the rig. Uh, over here, we've got a jumper plug. So this allows you to jump one of the battery connectors uh, on there. If you're running like a single 4S battery instead of like two 2S batteries, you're going to need to use this jumper. Then we have this plastic part here. I have no idea what this part is, but I will probably list it on the screen below. And then we have this standard Traxxas tools over here. This is a multi-tool. We've got a nut wrench and we've got uh, some, some Allen wrenches here. And then we've got some foam uh, battery blocks, probably for the battery compartment. All right. Now we could finally get to the truck and look how incredibly cool this uh, here. First off, look at this. Look at that suspension travel on this thing. That is absolutely insane. Killer suspension travel on there. So awesome. But look at this body. This body is absolutely fantastic. I love the look of it. I mean, just the shine on here alone. 
Uh, it, it, it's like I don't even want to run it. It just looks so good. It would make an awesome scale model for the shelf. But anyway, what I really like, this has clear windows in it. Yes, you could see all the way through inside to the cockpit where we've got the drivers inside. I mean, their helmets are detailed. They've got seat belts on. They've got like a full dashboard in there. I mean, just an incredible incredibly cool looking body absolutely incredible i mean the tires they go right up in it, it doesn't seem like they really bottom out in there they might you know if you go and bash this thing pretty hard but what's really cool what's sticking out and what's really catching my eye is the back of this thing here all right two spare tires functional spare tires i mean we're so used to seeing just plastic tires or non-functional tires these can actually be pulled off placed on the axles and you can go and run them. So that is really cool to see. Uh, over here, we got some faux batteries. There's a, a faux jack in the back, even with the handle bolted to the, the rear bumper here. Uh, we've got some faux batteries uh, over here and uh, fire extinguishers, reservoirs. We've got the fans with the radiator. And right here is a functional center drive shaft bolted to the rear of the truck. I mean, how cool is this? How scale is this? It's absolutely incredible to see something like this. I mean, right there on the truck. I mean, you could just pop it off and actually go and use it. That's pretty incredible. I, I really like that. Take a look at the front of that machine right there. We've got this reinforced front bumper, really solid front bumper. Looks like the body slides over the front of it there. Now, the one thing is, is the body is secured to this vehicle. So there's all these large flathead Allen screws here that secure the body to it. So you don't actually really work on the vehicle from the top like we're used to uh, with so many other vehicles. Where you really work on this vehicle is from the bottom. So let me just flip it over here and kind of show you what's going on down underneath. So right here is the belly pan of the vehicle and you can see it's kind of like this large plastic cover here and it's got this like semi cover over here. This little cover is actually the battery compartment. So what there is is there's like a little like thumb tab over here. You flip that over and you pop this thing down. Not in the right position to do it, but here we go. So it just pops right off just like that. And now you can access the batteries in here. And it looks like there's some more information here from Traxxas. Just another information sheet here, a cautionary sheet. Uh, about running the vehicle so definitely read that as well but here's where you access the batteries and uh, again it's a versatile battery compartment so you can run two 2s packs two 3s packs you can run a uh, a 4s pack a single 4s pack uh, and there's your battery connectors there it's the id connectors uh, so it works with all of traxxas's connectors the traxxas uh, charging system uh, and this is really a, a safety system uh, for those of you that aren't aware of the id connector uh, what it does is it allows you to make sure that you're properly charging the battery and it takes all that guesswork out of, you know, setting the charger up for nickel metal or lipo. Uh, so that's what the whole ID system is about. And it really works well for people that are new to the hobby. Uh, now moving back along here, obviously this is really easy to pop in and out gain access to your batteries and it slides right in. Now this is the only, this is one of the things that I saw that, you know, I'm gonna throw out there as, you know, maybe questionable in my eyes. Now I've encountered a number of lower battery installation uh, type setups and uh, where you have these little trays that slide in. And I've noticed in the past, uh, in some of the vehicles I reviewed, um, you know, dirt would get in here and kind of make it a little bit difficult uh, to get this panel off. So that's something that I'm going to keep a lookout for uh, when I'm reviewing this. And I'm going to let you guys know if that happens or not. You know, I'm not going to knock this just yet. Definitely have to test it first to make sure, you know, it works. But I'll let you guys know what's going on there. Now, while I'm under here, I mean, just take a quick look at these suspension arms. Really cool design on the suspension arms here and these rear trailing arms. I mean, these are pretty solid, not too much flex in there at all. They've got the metal pivots on each end. And then we've got this massive rear axle here. I mean, just look at the, basically the pumpkin of this thing. Uh, we've got some really heavy duty steel gears inside, but right here you can see that aluminum drive shaft coming down from the center transmission case. It's got CV universals right here uh, to transfer the power, uh, but pretty cool setup. But what I want to do here is I want to go and start pulling this thing apart, kind of show you guys what's involved in taking the body off so you can start to explore more of what's inside this truck. All right, so thanks to my Makita driver, I've made quick work of the 12 screws that hold the body on. Again, it's just 12 of these little flathead Allen screws. 
and those secure the body nicely. Now, once those off, the body is pretty easy to get off. You gotta pop up the rear of it, and what you kind of have to do here is just unlace the front of the, the front of the body uh, from the bumper. So you kind of slide it over to the side here, unlace the front top front, and then you come back, unlace the bottom front, and then you gain access to the inside. Now you can start to see some more of the detail here, and this is absolutely incredible. Look at the scale frame on this thing. I mean, it's really like a, a work of art here. I mean, they really just took a full scale frame and, and scaled it down. It's quite amazing how cool this thing looks. Um, now I can imagine it's a lot of work to probably put one of these things together, um, but hopefully you don't really have to do more than just access uh, most of your stuff from the bottom of the vehicle. Uh, but here again, you can see the interior. We've got the fully detailed cockpit area with the two drivers. And then over here, we've got the tin panels. They're, they're plastic panels, but basically give you that simulated look of the uh, interior panels of the vehicle. Now, I guess I could just start getting into some of the details of the vehicle here. So up front in the center, we have a sealed differential inside of a front case in here. Uh, and it allows you to use different fluids to adjust the uh, differential action of the vehicle. And what's really nice is it has these really heavy duty steel axles coming out, out to the steering knuckles here. And it's a CV style drive shaft, very large ball bearings here to support that. And then the arms themselves. So we've got a, you know, a double wishbone arm set up here and the uh, suspension is pretty, pretty stiff, pretty rugged. Uh, so this should take a lot of abuse and it's a kingpin style setup. So over here, so we've got these kingpin balls out here that secure the arm to the hub and, and everything is captured. I mean, that's one thing I noticed. Uh, we've got the sway bar link here. We've got the links over to the steering. I mean, everything is captured where it's got like a piece of plastic on the top and a piece of plastic on the bottom of uh, whatever link is there. So there's no chance of that link popping off. Uh, but over here, we've got those GTR shocks. I mean, check out those shocks. They look super cool. We've got a threaded body on the main shock here on the slave. It's just a smooth cylinder, uh, but that threaded body allows you to adjust the preload collar for the spring. It gives you a little bit more preload so you could adjust your ride height. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a sway bar up front here, cantilever style sway bar. Uh, just a really neat setup. We've got fixed links going uh, from the steering cranks out to those steering knuckles. Now, what we also have here on the outside of the axle, we have a 17 millimeter hex. So it allows you to put a 17 millimeter uh, wheel on here. We have those offset wheels that Traxxas is, is pretty well known for. It's got that nice red B-lock ring on there. That's painted B-lock. Uh, the tires are glued, but I gotta tell you something these are glued to perfection. I mean, I don't see any sloppy mess on these tires whatsoever from glue spilling over the side. So uh, the build quality on this seems to be pretty cool. All right, so now let's work our way out to the back. And I've kind of talked to you a bit about some of the stuff going on here already. So we've got the large axle in the back. Again, independent front suspension, solid axle in the rear, and the rear differential is locked. Uh, so you get that forward traction. Um, now over to the shocks again, we've got those big GTR shocks. We've got the slave shock there. Uh, I've already talked to you about the links. It's got the upper cantilever sway bar set up and what's really, really cool. It has limiting straps from the factory. We've got rubber limiting straps here. So the, the axle can't overextend if it gets pulled down and, and possibly break anything. And now the rest of the stuff that I have to talk to you about is located under this panel here. So I'm gonna stop yet again. I'm gonna go pull this panel off so I can start to talk to you about some of the stuff going on under here. Okay, so it took about a minute to pull off the lower cover here. Only eight screws that hold it on, and then you just have to slide out the little battery cover. Pretty easy to gain access to the bottom part of the truck. Basically, you can see here this inverted style tub, and uh, you know everything is pretty well laid out. I mean, you know everything looks really easy to access. So here's that lower battery support here. You just pop this out, kind of just clips right in, and you slide it up, you put your batteries in there pop that back down and it clips back into place. Over here we have the 2075X servo, uh, high torque servo, full metal gears in here, and that attaches over to the dual bell crank steering. It looks like a really heavy duty steering setup and it does have a servo saver spring built into it. So it should take uh, some of the shock from all the abuse that you're putting it through. It won't uh, strain the servo that much. And even here, again, all of the links in here are all captured. So you don't have to worry about a link popping off somewhere. It's all captured uh, and it's not gonna go anywhere basically. So over here, we've got the 2200 KV motor in here. That thing is just massive and it's bolted to a pretty unique uh, motor mount type of setup. What Traxxas did here, they've got this cast aluminum mount 
And what they did is they made a motor mounting system that allows you to set the gear mesh perfectly so you don't have to worry about setting the gear mesh. Um, it's all done through a guided system in here. It's just to make sure everything stays where it needs to be. You know, this thing is going to be enduring a lot of abuse, a lot of power from, you know, the 22 volts that some people are going to run in this thing. And it should be pretty easy to work on. In the center here, we have a, a torque sensing differential that will distribute the power where you need it through the drivetrain. Uh, pretty unique setup. Again, all steel gears inside. They want to make sure that this thing lasts and uh, it's pretty impressive. I'll pull this out so you can see it overlay it into the video here. It is definitely something that should be seen, you know, well supported with ball bearings and everything. Here's that aluminum center drive shaft. I mean, how cool does that little piece look? And then we actually have steel uh, upper rods here for the four link suspension. Forgot to mention that before. These are steel rods, uh, but really simple layout. I mean, uh, really easy to get to everything that you need to work on here. Now over here in the back of the vehicle, let me kind of just, I don't know if I could spin this around uh, on camera here, but I'll definitely overlay another picture. This speed controller in here is massive. It's the Traxxas VXL 6S, and this is just a massive speed controller. And what's really cool, it's bolted down, no two-sided tape. We don't need two-sided tape on a machine like this. But I, but I can see it's got a big fan to cool it down. Uh, we've got six millimeter bullet connectors on there. So just uh, a very cool system that should handle a lot of power. And now also buried somewhere in here is the receiver. Let me see if I could find that. So it's located right up front here. Once you take the body off, you can gain access to it. It's got that little peephole there to make sure that your, your radio is bound to the receiver, uh, but it is a waterproof receiver box. Uh, wires go in through this little cover down here and the large uh, cover is protected with an o-ring gasket just to make sure nothing gets inside of there. Uh, so it's pretty easy to access that. And there's really not much else be under these drivers, just kind of part of that inverted tub right there. Um, but I think I've uh, actually covered everything already. I mean, but once again, uh, this truck is like pure eye candy here. I mean, every time you look at a different part of it, you see something new on here. Just a very cool engineered vehicle. I mean, I can't imagine how much time was put into designing this machine. I mean, we just have a really rugged frame here, rugged front bumpers, a bit of a shock absorbing feature here with uh, that front loop. Uh, you could carry the truck from the rear bumper here. Uh, but everything is just set up to go and have fun and really mimic uh, that trophy truck action that you see out in the desert, you know, what, what and, and you get to do it in your backyard, down the street, uh, you know, if you've got uh, sand nearby, that would probably be very cool. Uh, I'm definitely going to find something very cool to test this thing in. But this is just a very exciting vehicle overall. I, I can't wait to go out and test it. You know, this video, again, is just an unboxing and overview video. No, wait, stop. I couldn't just leave you guys hanging there. You need to see this truck in action. It is so awesome. As you can see, it's already dirty. I've driven it. You have to see this thing run. Check this out.
Okay, hands down, the Traxxas Unlimited Desert Racer is an awesome driving experience. I had so much fun. Uh, what I did with it is I took it out to one of my favorite test locations, Wolcott Hobby up in Wolcott, Connecticut, and they basically have a private motocross track out behind their old uh, RC track, and that's where I took this machine because there was plenty of loose sand, huge jumps, berms, uh, there was rocks to deal with, and I put this truck through its paces. I went there armed with basically a pile of battery packs, just testing it, driving as hard as I could to make sure I give you all the details you need to know about this vehicle's performance. And, and overall, I mean, it's just absolutely awesome. Let me start off with what happened during the day. So I actually started off in training mode and uh, I did that because I wanted to get some good video for you guys, make sure, uh, you know, I got the truck in frame because this truck is really fast. I mean, they're boasting speeds over uh, 50 miles an hour on the box. So I wanted to make sure I got some good detail uh, of this thing in action. And so a lot of that video there was just in training mode. And just in training mode, this truck is faster than a lot of uh, 10 scale four wheel drive like monster trucks out there and stuff like that. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of what type of monster this machine is. It's got some power to it. But even in training mode, I mean, this thing pumped out some serious performance. But what I should do is break down the performance like I normally do. Uh, so let's start off with steering and I'll kind of jump back and forth here because I, I did, uh, you know, start off in training mode and then I put it in uh, sport mode. So I got a feel for both. So overall, uh, the thing steers really, really well. I was in some really loose sand and this thing had some bite to it, probably a little too much bite. And sometimes the edges of the tires would catch in that really loamy sand. Uh, they call it septic sand because it's a, a really sandy soil mixture. Uh, and it would catch and sometimes it would flip over and stuff, but it's got some really good steering to it. And, uh, you know, I could feel the TSM working. I could feel that kicking in and uh, correcting the truck for me. And I think that's part of why uh, the, the drive experience with this is so successful. She got that TSM in there just helping, uh, basically an assist. It's helping you uh, maintain control of the truck. And I think it did a really, really good job of that. But overall, the steering on here is on point. It does the job. It pointed in the direction that I needed it to. So that stock steering servo works well. The steering system works well. Definitely enjoy that. All right, now let's move on to uh, acceleration and, and braking. So like I said before, uh, this thing is actually pretty fast in training mode, uh, faster than some 10 scale trucks out there. So what I noticed is when you punch it, this thing just takes off straight. And, and that's kind of, it's kind of not what I was expecting because with a solid axe rear, sometimes you get that torque twist. But if you noticed uh, in some of the uh, photos that I posted before, and I'll post it again right here, Traxxas has this planetary gear reduction in the rear axle. And what that does is it helps uh, reduce that torque twist. And, and that's, I think, what really makes this truck successful sets it apart from the rest is that reduction in there uh, really just helps keep that truck planted when you're accelerating and it helps it throughout the acceleration I mean it just launches it goes it's tracking straight you got the TSM working in conjunction with it uh, even off the jumps uh, accelerating off the jumps uh, what I'm used to with some of these other uh, solid axle rear trucks is you get that buck um, that a lot of people you know, try to dial out through setup and stuff, but this truck doesn't really buck like those other uh, solid axle rear trucks. Uh, it takes a nice and level and I'm jumping into performance. Uh, but anyway, back to acceleration. Uh, so in trading mode, very awesome. And then I threw it into sport mode. And again, in sport mode, same thing. I mean, it just launches so hard. You got dirt roofs flying off the back of the truck. It's just accelerating hard. And I was in some pretty loose stuff. so. You know, I could see the truck, the TSM, I could see, you know, everything working in conjunction to keep this thing straight. And, uh, you know, there were some times where it did get a bit squirrely. Uh, you know, if you really punch the throttle hard, this the front end kind of lifts up. We've got some differential action to the front. You can see the front tires kind of ballooning up just a bit. And, and if you're in some really loose sand, you know, it'll start to walk a little bit. But I mean, again, everything is, is kind of working together to try to keep this thing under control for you so that assist is definitely working. But the acceleration on this thing, absolutely incredible. And it's got some serious braking action too. This thing slows up when you need it to uh, off of jumps. If you need to drop the nose down, just be careful if you grab too much brake, it will drop the nose pretty hard. So just be mindful of that. But overall, I mean, as you saw, this thing is an acceleration monster. 
All right, now on to the handling portion of it. This thing was being put through its paces on a motocross track. You know what a motocross bike does to dirt. It just destroys uh, any type of track that you set up. And this uh, track that I was running on was basically just bumps and ruts and rocks everywhere I went. And this thing was hitting massive boulders. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like rocks that wouldn't even move. Um, this thing was hitting a lot of stuff. So, uh, you know, I got, I got to talk to you about durability. But as far as handling goes, I mean, this thing was just soaking stuff up. And what was just really cool is like you see on TV with the full scale trophy trucks, you know, that, that main body is just like sitting there level, but the, but the suspension is just going up and down and the rear is dropping out. That's the type of driving experience you get with this. The, you know, this all that suspension action that makes it look so cool on TV is happening here with this pro scale machine. I mean, uh, I was just really excited driving it. it. It gives you a great experience. What I did find out was when, you, when you're in sport mode, it really likes that mid range throttle. That's where a lot of your, your control is. Uh, I know there's a lot of trigger happy people out here that just want to keep things flat punched. But if you really want to enjoy this truck and see it in action, see things working, that mid range of throttle is a lot of fun to drive. in. so keep that in mind uh, when you're approaching jumps, uh, keep it in the mid range, give it a squirt of throttle at the end. And this thing just sails through the air and you know, the suspension drops out, it lands. I was taking some of the jumps at a really high speed and uh, sometimes it would kick up and and the thing would just fly through the air a bit nose down and you could see the TSM just turning the wheels trying to straighten the truck out and uh, you know for the most part it would pull it out of a lot of nasty landings the, the, the handling capability is just there the jumping ability is just there uh, it's just so cool to watch flying through the air really did enjoy it run times were actually really long i i don't have an exact number because you know we were doing a lot of filming at the same time uh but i ran uh four full sets of batteries through it and you know i was getting probably around 20 minutes or maybe even more uh so there's definitely some long run times but the speed you know it depends on how you drive it if you're full clamp all the time you know you're probably going to drop some minutes off of your your run times but uh, you're running in that mid-range throttle. I think you get some long run times out of it. Um, now we should probably talk about durability. And you know what? I beat the living you know what out of this truck. I, I know there's a lot of eyes on this truck. You guys want to know, uh, you know what the great points are and you want to know what the weak points are. And so I set out to find the weak points. And through all the driving I did during the normal testing, you know, not a single issue whatsoever i mean the only thing maybe i could kind of point out was there's a little bit of gear whine in there um, not a big deal it's just you know sound uh the other thing is that tray that i mentioned before you know that i did get some sand and dirt in there made it a little hard to to get the tray out but you know it's a few seconds of jiggling the tray in order to get it out not a big deal it's not like it locks it in place so those are the only two minor little issues now after the day was pretty much over i had one more set of packs to go and i said you know what i'm just gonna send it and that's what i did i went out to one of the biggest jumps i could find on the motocross track and i put that new set of batteries in it had a long run up to it and what i did is i just started to send the truck basically closing my eyes once this thing launched off of the jump just letting it fly and land however it landed, not trying to control it at all. Just being totally irresponsible with the truck and seeing what happened to it. And I jumped and I jumped and I jumped and I put about a dozen jumps in before I was like, you know what? I think, I think it's good enough. I'm gonna go home and I'm like, you know what? There's always one more jump, right? So I go and send it off the jump the last time, full throttle, not caring about the landing and it cartwheeled and it cartwheeled and it cartwheeled and I can't tell you how far this thing went uh, but it took a massive hit and that's finally when something happened uh, I did bend one of the upper rear links uh, on the suspension here and I noticed there is a small hairline crack in one of the front arms now actually this truck is still completely usable. I could go, I could pull that rod out, put it in my bench vise, straighten it back out, and I could go out and run again. This hair, little hairline crack in the arm, not gonna cause any problems. Uh, I'm probably gonna replace it just cause you know everything has to be perfect on my truck. Um, but again, this thing is so tough. I cannot express how much stress this truck went through in that crash. I really put it through its paces, I think. 
trying to find a weak point for you guys. I'm really not going to knock it. If you're driving this thing, uh, you know, responsibly, paying attention to your landings, paying attention to your launch points and stuff like that, this truck, I believe, is going to be incredibly durable and overall it's just an incredible experience it's a much different experience than some other vehicles out there uh, you know i suggest taking some time maybe even starting in trading mode just to get a feel for the truck because it's a bit different how it reacts and once you do get a feel of how it reacts i i believe you're really going to enjoy it it is a lot of fun the speed is there the handling factor is there the jump factor is there and just overall it's an exciting machine traxxas did an awesome job with this and I really think there's going to be a lot of these vehicles out there tearing up backyards, tearing up dirt lots, tearing up racetracks. It's truly one of those must have machines for the RC enthusiast. Now, one more point I kind of want to touch on because I see people talking about it is the price of the machine. It's around $800. And well, look at, you know, let's break things down here. Look at the size of the thing. Number one, this is a large scale truck here, basically and there is a lot of new stuff on here this isn't some parts bin car traxxas went out everything is new on here everything uh, you know they had to create molds for it uh and you know that's really costly in itself uh you know, it's got a rigid body on here this is licensing we've got bf goodrich tires that's licensing those are costs that uh, all have to get translated over to this truck um you know you want to break it down even further you know, we've got the the Valenian 6S speed controller in here with a 2200 kV. If you go out and buy that, you know, a comparable speed controller uh, and motor on the market, what's it like $300? So you go and you knock $300 off the price. Now you're down to a $500 truck. And you know what? It's got the radio system in there. Let's call it $100 for, you know, the radio, the receiver and the servo. Okay, so now you've gone from a $500 truck down to a $400 truck. With all the stuff that's on here, uh, you know, you've got two spare tires out back. Think of the cost of tires, you know, a, a, a spare axle sitting on the back of it. So you really start to break things down. You know, don't look at the overall price. Break things down of what you're getting and you kind of understand, okay, $800 is actually pretty reasonable for a vehicle of this size that could go 50 miles an hour, that could give you the realistic performance of a true trophy truck. I think Traxxas is pretty much on point for the price. So I'm not gonna knock them for the price of this machine. Uh, it's definitely worth what you're getting with this kit. All right, guys, I know that review was super long and I hope you really enjoyed it. I put a lot of time into it. I wanted to make sure you guys were completely informed of everything going on with the Unlimited Desert Racer and, and I think I covered everything. If you have any questions or comments, please throw it in the section below. Of course, hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell because we're gonna have more projects coming up with this machine. Don't want you guys to miss it. And of course, when you have some spare time, head over to rcdriver.com where we have even more information on the Unlimited Desert Racer.